So John, we have Rob Davis, who's the CTO of QLogic, and Rob's been on theCUBE before. So uh, why don't we bring Rob in and uh, have a little discussion about what's going on at the event here, and uh, talk a little I.O. Rob, why don't you come on in and join us, and uh, welcome again, Rob Davis, CTO of QLogic. Um, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Okay. Well, thanks to you guys. I want to just say thanks for supporting us here at theCUBE, really, the QLogic. We wouldn't be here, so we are in the Q Logic booth, and I see the logos behind us speak uh, speak to that. So thanks for the support. Our pleasure. You're very welcome. Yeah. So Rob, the last you know year or so, we've been talking about I/O, the changes that are going on in I/O, how virtualization and cloud are really pressuring new storage architectures, new networking architectures, the flattening of the network. We want to talk about some of this, but um, why don't we start with? with um, a discussion around Oracle Open World. Oracle, a little different than we, one of our last events was VMworld. You know, a lot of virtualization talk at VMworld, tons, that's the whole show. More here this year than last year. Um, what are you seeing at this event uh, from QLogic's perspective, and you know, how's it going for you? Well, I think uh, Oracle you know, has their own uh, virtual operating system products, and, and they've um, you know, brought them to the show, and they're, um, providing those to the enterprise right as competition to VMware. And um, from an I.O. perspective, we have uh, designed our products around virtualization to be generic, so they'll work with any virtual operating system, whether it's VMware or um, Oracle's virtual so, operating system. So what are you seeing out there as the, the big drivers, the, the big tectonic shifts that are, that are changing your business? Um, from the QLogic perspective, I think what we see is uh, consolidation um, you know, of the I.O. technologies um, around you know, three basic technologies, Ethernet, InfiniBand, and Fiber Channel. Um, you know, in the data center, you mainly have a Fiber Channel on the SAN side and Ethernet on the LAN side, but with FCOE and iSCSI, there's a bleeding over of the storage technologies in, into the, the Ethernet world. So I need to ask you, because Larry Ellison basically trashed Ethernet up on his keynote. On, it's old, it's at park. Um, so I want to get your comments on, on, on his uh, trashing of Ethernet. And okay. two, the keynote was about performance. Obviously Oracle's touting performance as the big thing right now. Um, and with hardware speeds and feeds as everyone's talking about. A lot, not a lot of vision. Obviously big data is a focus, but performance. You mentioned InfiniBand and all these things. This is kind of in the QLogic wheelhouse. So one, share with us, one, your comment on him dissing Ethernet. And two, uh, the emphasis of performance and what really is the performance equation in today's marketplace? Well, from Oracle's perspective, they're big on InfiniBand. And from a performance perspective, InfiniBand comes out of the HPC uh, market, which is high performance by name, right? So uh, I think if you try to compare Ethernet to InfiniBand on a raw performance perspective, InfiniBand wins. But Ethernet is, you know, from a market share perspective, huge. And it's pervasive. And um, I think you can use InfiniBand in high performance systems in a w that are um, enclosed around an application like Oracle does, but if you're going to connect to the rest of the world, you better have an Ethernet plan. So we were on the Twitter stream, obviously on the keynote and all day yesterday, and there's been a debate going on around the notion of general purpose computing and, and special um, purpose built computing. Obviously Oracle's going more purpose built, uh, integration all the way up and down, and then you got this general purpose where Ethernet does fit into a more open ecosystem with converged networking. Talk about the approaches and what's going, what do you see, how do you see that playing out? The purpose built uh, architectures and um, the general purpose architectures. Well, first of all, we're focused on providing high performance I.O. to all of the different approaches. So we do InfiniBand technology, Ethernet technology, and fiber te channel technology, and we're able to mix them together in our products. Um, but as far as where one should be used or the way the industry is going, we see that our OEM customers are trying to get more and more of the solution and more and more of the stack into their product lines. Um, whereas it used to be you would go to Cisco for your networking, you would go to EMC for your storage, you would go to HP, Dell, IBM for your servers. Now they're trying to put those together into 
one stack and wrap a certain technology around it that Oracle has chosen InfiniBand as that technology for the so I.O. So two questions, what does that mean for you? And then I got a follow up. Um, for us it means that we need to make sure that we're um, providing the technology of our OEM, the technology choice of our OEM. So in the, from Oracle perspective, that's InfiniBand. From um, other o OEMs, it's Ethernet, fiber channel. So my, my follow up on that is that virtualization really changes so many things. Um, from a performance, from a monitoring standpoint, in, in a physical world, you can kind of see what's going on. You know what the connections look like. Yeah. You can put fences around different physical resources and secure things. In a virtual world, it's like one big black box. Are you seeing demand um, from either your OEM customers or maybe, and I know you're one step removed, but from end customers, you know, big banks and insurance companies and the like, to get end-to-end -end visibility so they can do better management, more performance tuning um, in a virtualized world? Well, uh, from our product line perspective, we provide the hooks, you know, the dials and the, and the meters for our OEM customers to integrate their management. Um, in the world of Oracle, um, for their virtual operating system, we have special registers in our adapters that provide the um, functionality needed um, for um, moving the VMs, you know, across to different platforms or for um, tuning the performance around a particular VM's the requirements, those, those kind of functions. Right, so I, I, I want to stay on this topic for a little bit because I'm, I'm trying to understand the, the value of end-to-end, -end, if in fact there is any. Is that illusory? Is it a sort of a, a, a just hype? Or do you see that there is value? Well, I think the end users think there's value because they're, um, if they've got products from three or four different companies, say doing network, doing storage, doing server, they need three different management platforms, they need training on those. If they can get it all from one company like Oracle, then they have one pane of glass, one management tool that manages the storage, the networking, and uh, the server, as so, well as the operating system. So we like to look at the horses in the track, and you guys have, obviously, you know, big adapter business, you've got sort of switches in the edge, they're getting bigger, you're really not dominant in the core at this time, but you know, the, you've got a lot of the pieces in place, so certainly Brocade is pushing end-to-end -end visibility with its strategy, Dell buys Force 10, now they don't have the adapter side of the business, but they've got the top of rack switch in the core. Um, are you, it, I'm sensing that there's, the industry is getting closer to, to competing on that basis. Um, do you agree? Do you, do you, do you mean that, um, that, do you mean competing on, on a total end-to-end -end solution? On an end -to -end oh, solution. totally. And, totally and agree. then, what does that mean for you guys? You know, can you get there? You know, particular the the white space being the the the, the core. Are your edge switches getting large enough now that you can sort of rack and stack them and, and, and deliver that vision? Well, we you know we again we go through OEMs. So for you know the perspective of Dell buying Force 10, um, that's very similar to in our um, announced product lines. Um, HP uh, bought 3Com, and we're embedded in 3Com's products that are now HP labeled. Right. So our goal would be to do the same, you know, with the acquisition of Dell um, of Force 10, with the acquisition of uh, when IBM bought BNT. You know, we have yeah. products that interface into these new networking products of our OEMs. Well, Dell's an announced customer, right? Of, of uh, Dell's an announced uh, customer for CNAs. certain products, yes. Yeah. Uh, for example, I think you've got a design win there. I, I yep. lost track of the design wins, Rob. I mean, you've got so many of them. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So, so how about um, how about this notion of management? Um, talk a little bit more about your management philosophy uh, again, and how virtualization changes that. So, our management philosophy is to pr allow our OEMs management software to interface in ways with our hardware that gives them value to their customers. 
My question for you is, I'll say, you know, Oracle's got the new approach, um, well, same approach on one end, but, you know, with big data and being vertically integrated with, with the performance. Has the OEM business changed for you guys over the past few years? And can you share with the folks out there, you know, what, what major seismic changes have happened in the business and how you guys approach um, working with all the top players? Because you do have insight into roadmaps and, and architectures because you are, you know, dealing with future products. What's changed? Is any, has anything changed? Well, I can't really share the roadmaps of our OEM, sorry, <laughs> but um, what's changed for us is that we used to be able to take a product like a fiber channel adapter back in the days of 2GIG, and we would sell that to all the OEMs with hardly any changes. And now, as the OEMs build these vertical product lines, we ha are spending a lot of um, effort to figure out how they want to differentiate from the other vertical product lines, and that means customization to our products, different for each OEM. So uh, we have Intel on later, and we're really interested in hearing what they have to say. And you know, uh, John and I were talking earlier about you know, the generations of microprocessors that we've seen from going from the PC era, which Intel clearly dominates, and now it looks like you know, they're dominating the server business, and of course you've got new mobile uh, trends going on, but Romley is something that the industry is expecting um, coming up here you know, shortly. Um, what does that mean to you? Uh, from, from our perspective, it means generation three PCI Express, so our products that are designed for the Romley timeframe on the adapter side have um, Gen 3 interface. Um, that in turn gives uh, a, higher perform a higher performance to the wire coming out of the adapter. So for um, fiber channel, it's our 16 gig fiber channel product that we announced last week. It, for the switches, it's 40 gig ethernet. You know, so it, it, the speeds are just getting faster. On the virtualization side, it's more features for the virtual operating systems and the adapters, uh, so on and so on. I wonder if you could you know, put your, bring out your binoculars or maybe your telescope, maybe go a little bit further. You've been with QLogic how long now? Uh, since the acquisition of Ancor in yeah. 2000. 2000, so you've seen you know, the transformation of the company, um, pretty, pretty dramatic transformation of the company. Absolutely. Um, when you guys made some big bets on you know, integrating silicon, and, and a lot of people thought you were crazy at the time. Um, but you've really sort of evolved, you are evolving, I would say, from what I would consider a pure adapter company to much more of a, a data center supplier. Um, is that an accurate perception? Uh, and can you talk about what you're trying to do there and what your vision is for the, the company? And take the technical perspective if you like, but I'd, I'd like you to share with the audience where you see you know, the, the company going you know, midterm to long term. Um, so I think our, you know, our, we're a, an arm supplier for, to the OEMs, right? So they want fiber channel technology, we have it. They want Ethernet technology, we have it. They want InfiniBand technology, we have it. So our um, approach is to make sure we're designing products today for an intercept point with them in two or three year time frame. Great, because that's the time it takes for ASICs to, to be developed and, and debugged. And, so, and do you do you see yourself as a data center technology supplier, or, or more of we of we see ourselves as a supplier to the companies that provide you know go to the data center. We don't go direct. We yeah, go oh, through OEMs. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, okay. Good. Rob Davis, thanks very much. You know, appreciate you coming on theCUBE and sharing some of your perspectives about what's different about Oracle, where QLogic is headed, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you around the circuit. Thanks very Great. much. Rob, good to see thanks you. Good to see you again.